The go-between from the law firm texted me at 3 p.m. on Sunday to let me know she had the kids in the car with their belongings and was on her way to the house. No message in history has been as dreaded for anyone as that one was for me. The real tragedy was that just weeks before, I would have smiled and eagerly awaited the text. Now, a reunion I once yearned for had become something I dreaded. I had no plans to bring up divorce, paternity, or any issues with the kids. I wasn't in the right state of mind for that, and my goal was for everything to go as normally as possible, like the times they'd stayed with their grandparents while Mary and I were on vacation. But I knew reality would be different, and I had little control over it. Jessica, the intern from the firm, pulled into the driveway. Watching them arrive, I smiled as I approached her car, but as soon as I saw Carrie in her car seat smiling up at me, I started crying. I kept my smile, hoping it would reassure the kids and myself that everything was okay. I hugged Carrie and Michael, telling them I missed them. That was all I could manage to say through the tears. People can hate me all they want. I've received hateful messages, but seeing them and knowing Carrie isn't mine shattered my heart all over again. That's what my life has become, daily heartbreak. I keep learning more about Mary's cheating, the extent of her lies, and how much I've been deceived. It feels like every day I get hit with a new betrayal, Jessica was a saint, helping me get the kids inside. After she left, I sat with Carrie, who hugged me like she knew I was the one in need. That little girl broke me. No child should have to console a parent, especially for something that's not their fault. I felt rage toward Mary in that moment, but Carrie, the little girl Mary told me was mine, only knew how to show love. It dawned on me that both Carrie and I are victims in this. She doesn't even know she's been hurt yet. We've both survived, but we're left with scars. I've been looking at it as if Mary took my daughter from me, but it's equally true that she took her father from her. I realize the real villain here is Mary, and I'm done feeling guilty about my emotions. There's no handbook for how to deal with finding out the daughter you raised isn't biologically yours. No one can tell me how to feel or react. It's like children being switched at birth, unless you've lived through it, you can't fully understand. Later that evening, after Jessica left, the kids and I spent some time together. I cooked dinner, we played games, and I tucked them into bed. When I kissed Carrie goodnight, I told her I loved her for the first time since learning the truth. It felt like I was admitting to myself that, despite everything, my love for her is real. However, when Carrie told me, Mommy loves you, I knew something was off. I gently asked her why she said that, and she revealed that her mom had told her to say it. Michael confirmed that Mary had told them I didn't love her anymore, which was why she wouldn't be coming home. I was furious. I called our babysitter to come over, and I drove to Mary's parents' house. I confronted her, demanding to know why she was pinning the blame for our split on me. She claimed it was the truth, that I stopped loving her. I told her it wasn't that simple, that the reason I couldn't love her anymore was because of her lies and betrayal. She tried to apologize, but it didn't matter anymore. The damage was done, and I didn't believe she was truly sorry. We talked for hours. She opened up about her depression after Michael was born, how she struggled with feelings of worthlessness, and how that led to her cheating. She admitted that, despite everything, she never thought I'd find out. But even after I did, she kept lying and cheating. She said that at first, it wasn't about sex. It was about validation. She enjoyed being chased, feeling desired, even though she knew it would destroy our marriage if I found out. When I asked her why she continued to cheat, she claimed the guilt and shame only made her feel worse, but she couldn't stop. Hearing all of this, I was disgusted, knowing she had willingly deceived me for so long. I told her that despite everything, she should have let me go. Instead, she kept lying and betraying not just me, but our children and everyone around us. 
I didn't hold back, telling her that she was a pitiful excuse for a human being. 